hi now i guess we have learned so much of the discussions that are discussed earlier now we are down to our next topic that is the skeletal muscle anatomy let's start the skeletal muscle anatomy on our previous discussions we have learned that anatomy is the science that deals with uh, or the science that is concerned with the bodily structure of the human body and other living things but for now we will study we will tackle about the skeletal muscle anatomy so the individual skeletal muscles such as biceps bronchi are complete organs take note of this that the individual skeletal muscles are complete organs we can recall from our um, previous discussions that an organ is consist of one or more tissue types that works together for a common function each of the muscle cell is called muscle fiber our skeletal muscle is consist of skeletal muscle tissue nervous tissues connective tissues and adipose tissues let us now have connective tissue each skeletal muscle is surrounded by several connective tissue layers that support muscle during contraction. A skeletal muscle has three layers of connective tissue. The first one is the epimysium, the second one is the paramysium, and the last one is the endomysium. Now let us start with the epimysium. Epimysium is um, a muscle that forms a connective tissue shaft that surrounds each skeletal muscle. It is a layer of dense irregular connective tissue whose protein fibers gradually merge with the muscular fascia. So this epimysium is a dense layer whose um, protein fibers gradually merge with the muscular fascia. And this muscular fascia is the layer of connective tissue between the adjacent muscles and between the muscles and the skin. And these outer layers, the epimysium together with the muscular fascia, is, um, is a connective tissue that keeps the muscles separate from the surrounding tissue organs. So the epimysium um, keeps the muscles separate from the surrounding tissue organs. The second one is the perimysium. The perimysium subdivides each whole muscle into numerous visible bundles of muscle fibers called fascicles. Um, the perimysium is a loose layer of connective tissue serving as a passageway for the blood vessels and nerves that supply each fascicle. So this perimysium, it subdivides each whole muscle into numerous visible bundles of muscle fibers and this um, bundle of muscle fibers is called fascicle. Take note of that. And um, this perimysium is a loose layer of connective tissue. If the epimysium is a dense layer, this one, this time, this perimysium is a loose layer of connective tissue that serves as a passageway for the blood vessels and the nerves that supply each fascicle. The third and last layer of the skeletal muscle on a connective tissue is the endomysium. Endomysium is a delicate layer of connective tissue that separates the individual um, muscle fiber within each fascicle. Um, this endomysium also serves as a passageway for nerve fibers and blood vessels that supply each and separate um, muscle fibers. So this endomysium is a delicate layer and it separates the individual muscle fibers within each fascicle. And it also serves as a passageway of the nerve fibers and the blood vessels. Protein fibers of these three layers of connective tissue are interwoven and blend into one another. The collagen fibers of these three layers converge or meet at the ends of the muscle and together form tendon or fascia of another muscle. These attachments serve as to move uh, the bones or skin for locomotion, facial expression, and other types of movements. The nerve and blood vessels. So the skeleton muscle have a rich supply of blood vessels and the nerves. 
the specialized nerve cells responsible for stimulating skeletal muscle contraction are called motor neurons. So these motor neurons is uh, the specialized nerve cells that is responsible for stimulating skeletal muscle contraction. So these motor neurons originated in the brain and in the spinal cord and extend to the skeletal muscle fibers through the nerves. The whole muscles are generally supplied by several motor neurons. Every skeletal muscle fiber in our body is controlled by a branch of motor neurons. Right next, for our muscle physiology. So there are three major muscle types that is found in the human body. The first one is the skeletal muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the smooth muscle. So each of that muscle type has a unique cellular components, um, specific functions, physiology, and pathology. Let us start with the skeletal muscle. So the skeletal muscle is an organ that primarily controls the movement and the posture of the human body. The skeletal muscle constitutes approximately about um, 40%, 40% of the total body weight of the human body. So its composition is many individual fibers that are bundled together into a muscle spindle. And this gives the skeletal muscle a striated appearance. So the skeletal muscle is an organ and it is um, its primary um, function is to control the movement and the posture of the human body. So the skeletal muscle constitutes about 40% of the um, total body weight of the human body. So it is composed of uh, fibers that are bundled together and that results um, to the skeletal muscle to have a striated appearance because it is composed of fibers that are bundled together. The next um, is that the each of that fiber, that fiber is composed mostly of actin and myosin fibers covered by a cell membrane called sarcolemma. Again, each of that single fiber that is composed mostly of actin and myosin fibers covered by a cell membrane and that is called, uh, that cell membrane is called sarcolemma. So these fibers are functional unit of the organ and its primary function is for the muscle contraction the muscle contraction and muscle relaxation. So again, take note that these fibers are functional unit of the organ. So these actin and biosin fibers are functional unit of the organ and the primary function of that fibers is to is for the muscle contraction and the muscle relaxation. The second is the cardiac muscle. So, the cardiac muscle encompasses the heart, which keeps the human body alive. The cardiac muscle, or the myocardium, is an involuntary, striated muscle that encloses the chambers of the heart. So, the cardiac muscle encompasses the heart, and that is also the muscle that encloses the chambers of the heart. So, from the word cardiac, that is... um somehow related to the heart that is to the heart that that is why um it is called cardiac muscle because it is a muscle that uh, encloses the chambers of the human heart of our heart so this cardiac muscle also compromises the individual cardiomyocytes that which is similar in the structure of the skeletal muscle. So each cardiomyocyte contains cytoskeletal and contractile elements. So these are highly adherent complexes which allow the cardiac muscle cells to receive a rapid electrical transmission and contract as a single unit. So it also contains a specialized cardiac pacemaker cells that lies within the myocardium so these cells allow the cardiac tissue to depolarize without external stimuli intrinsically the third muscle type is the smooth tissue so this smooth tissue the cells of smooth muscle are also composed of actin and myosin fibers however they are arranged in sheets rather than spindles um, this smooth tissue is also composed of actin and myosin fibers, just like how the cardiac muscle is 
also composed of. So, but their difference, however, um, this um, smooth tissue, smooth muscle tissue is arranged in sheets while the cardiac muscle is in, in spindle type and sp or spindle shape. So whether it is skeletal, uh, cardiac or smooth muscle, the muscles in the human body functions to create force and movement. The skeletal muscles support the bones to maintain posture as well as voluntary movement. So the skeletal muscles um, also contributes to energy metabolism and storage. The cardiac muscle propels blood and leads to proper oxygenation and maintenance of each cell that comprises the human body. Smooth muscle is located all throughout our body and uses contractile force for shortening and propelling various contents across the lumen and the multiple organ systems in which it is involved. Now we have muscular pathology. We have learned that the pathology is the study of the causes and the effects of a disease or injury. So therefore, muscular pathology is the study of the causes and effects of the disease or injury relating to our muscles. So muscles allows us to move but sometimes the wear and tear that comes from moving our bodies can lead to disorders of the muscular systems. So here are some of the common um, muscular pathologies. The first one is the tendon Inflammation can cause carpal tunnel syndrome. So, the carpal tunnel is the passageway in the wrist where the median nerve and flexor tendons can pass through a narrow opening. So, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is also called the median nerve compression, occurs when the tendons became inflamed, causing compression of the median nerve. Um, these symptoms uh, include the pain, numbness, and even eventual um, weakness in the hand so the carpal tunnel syndrome can occur for a variety of reasons including hereditary predisposition repetitive movements um, diabetes or thyroid uh, disorders so carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by the tissues and tendons around the median nerves uh, swelling and pressing on the nerve the second one is the bursitis described uh, inflamed bursae so the bursae are small fluid filled sacs that cushion to the bones so the tendons uh, and muscles near the near the joints so this bursitis occurs when bursae become red and inflamed uh, and that causes pain so this condition often uh, occurs near to the joints that perform frequent repetitive motion such as the shoulder the elbow the hip and the knee. The third one is the a rotator cuff tear affects the muscles and tendons around the shoulder. So the rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons that uh, surrounds the shoulder joint. So these muscles keep the top of the upper arm in the shoulder socket by forming a cuff na that not only uh, holds the arm in place but helps it move in various directions. So, gradual degeneration due to repetitive overhead, um, overhead motion of, uh, or a sudden traumatic event can tear one of the muscles or tendons of the rotator cuff. So, symptoms of this injury include pain, decreased range of motion in the shoulder, and muscle weakness. So, the fourth one is the repetitive forearm strain can cause lateral epicondylitis. So, lateral epicondylitis affects the muscles of the forearm that join on the lateral side or outside of the elbow. So, this condition is also called the tennis elbow because the repetitive strain of these muscles is commonly seen in the patients who play a lot of tennis or other racket sports. So, overuse of these muscles can cause damage. As a result, Micro tears uh, may develop in tendons causing inflammation and pain. So this pain and tenderness is felt on the outside of the elbow. Right? The effects of aging on skeletal muscles. So a primary consequence of aging is sarcopenia 
or muscle atrophy, the age-related reduction in muscle mass and regulation of muscle function. So, aging skeletal muscle undergoes several changes that reduce muscle mass, increase in time, uh, increase the time muscle takes to uh, contract in response to the nervous stimuli, reduce stamina, and increase the recovery time. So, the loss of muscle fibers begin begins as early as 25 years of age and by the age of 80. So, one important component of age-related loss of muscle mass is the maintenance of independence in elderly people. So, in order to help delay sarcopenia, sarcopenia uh, weightlifting exercises are helpful to slow down the loss of muscle mass but it do not prevent the loss of muscle fibers so in addition fast twitch muscle fibers decrease in number more rapidly than slow twitch muscle fibers most of the lost strength and speed due to the is due to the loss of fast twitch muscle fibers in addition, the surface area of the neuromuscular junction decreases and as a result, action potentials in neurons stimulate action potentials in muscle fibers more, is more slowly. So, fewer action potentials are produced in the um, muscle fibers. So, the number of um, motor neurons also decreases. Some of the muscle fibers that lose their innervation when the neuron dies re innervated by a branch of another motor neuron. This uh, makes motor units in skeletal muscle fewer in number with a greater number of um, muscle fibers for each neuron, which may result in less precise muscle control. Aging is also associated with um, decreased density of capillaries in skeletal muscles so that a longer recovery period is required after exercise. Many of the age-related changes in skeletal muscle can be slowed dramatically if people remain physically active instead of assuming a, sed a sedentary life. So studies shown is shown that um, elderly people who are sedentary can become stronger and more mobile in response to exercise.